everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here, and today we start a new series of interviews with Steve Davis, a truly underrated Golden Era bodybuilder who would go on to win the Mr. Los Angeles, Mr. California, and Mr. World competitions during the 1970s, and possessed one of the most statuesque physiques from the Golden Era, as symmetric and aesthetically appealing as Frank Zane's. What I find most interesting about Steve was his approach to building his physique up, where he bulked up to almost 300 pounds through powerlifting, and then cut down to the amazingly chiseled and classically proportioned physique that we see in these images. This transformation has to be one of the most impressive transformations seen in bodybuilding since that of Bruce Randall in the 1950s, and I was particularly interested as to how Steve Davis achieved this. In this first video, Steve Davis details his exact bulking diet, the steroid cycle he used, and powerlifting program that had him weighing almost 300 pounds, and how he then stripped almost 100 pounds of body fat off his physique in one year to win the Mr. World competition in 1977. Enjoy. How's it? Hi Steve, this is Carlos. Hi, how's it? Oh, it's great. It's fine. How do I spell your first name? Carlos. It's a C A R L O S. Just Carlos. Gotcha. Hi, gotcha. Hi, Carlos. Hi, Steve. It's a great privilege. I uh, just want to say to um, be speaking to you. It's um, yeah, I'm I'm really uh, excited. I, I believe, like besides Frank Zane, your um, you, you, your physique was, I think, one of the most symmetrical and aesthetic physiques statuesque almost kind of like an apollo physique um you know from the golden era there were so many uh, i guess larger physiques but yours kind of stood out in that it was rather statuesque just like frank zane so it's a real privilege to speak to you and i really want to thank you for you for this opportunity <laughs> i think um it's my pleasure um i think um that my long history of athletics kind of determine my physique. Right. Um, um, my mother was uh, Danish, God bless her, mm -hmm. God rest her soul. She probably had uh, 17 and a half inch diamond calves and wide clavicles. And my father, uh, who was a, a Hollywood uh, stuntman, uh, was about 5'9 and had tissue paper skin. Wow. Okay. So between the two of them, I, I couldn't lose. <laughs> but I think the, ba the basis of my physique came from sports. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, uh, in the off season, uh, during, uh, after football season ended, then we spent, uh, you know, the next quarter in the weight room. Mm -hmm. And then baseball, and then uh, the next quarter in the weight room. So, I mean, when I was uh, six, six, 16 years old, uh, as a senior in high school, I could do 10 reps with 300 in the bench press. Wow. So I had, um, I had an athletic background. I'm a fierce competitor. And um, I think that uh, that same year, when I was 16, my mom and dad got a divorce. Mm -hmm. My dad fell in love with a blonde starlet, and, and, and my, mother, my mother played the piano in the, the studio uh, in Warner Brothers for, for motion pictures, back, back, sound. And, and so um, my father said to me, as he walked out the door, so anything I can do. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, I'd love to have a membership to Vince's gym. Right. So uh, back then it was 50 bucks a year. My dad handed him, ripped out the cash. And uh, then, you know, the next day I went in, I met Vince. Um, I gave him the money. And he said to me, if I had your frame, I'd be famous. <laughs> so my initial, 
you know, I'm not famous for having a Christmas tree lower back. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, I never, you, you couldn't do sluts there. We, we did high sluts mm. or sissy sluts. So I really never had that, like, gold gym, uh, Olympic lifting uh, background. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you know, um, so, so I really, and if you look at it, I'm really kind of a cross between Steve Reeves, Vince, and Frank Zane. Yeah, you've got that and, symmetrical um, look. And um, uh, speaking of Frank Zane, uh, so my first mentor was, was Vince, and if you remember, I so I started there in 65, that was the first year that Larry Scott won the Olympia. Right, okay, I didn't so know that. I trained, I trained after school, Larry trained after he came from the bike shop, we were both there at 4 o'clock, and for the next two and a half, three years, I, I trained within 10 feet of Larry, three years in a row. Mm, I didn't know that. Um, do you mind backtracking a bit? Um, like what, what, what got you into bodybuilding and, and what age were you initially? Was it, so you, it was during your, or after your high school? Was that around the time you started bodybuilding? During high school, during high school. Right. Okay. So, so you were, you've mentioned you, you were doing football and baseball and you were very athletic. Right. And, um, right. were you already a power lifter then? No, um, I, um. I took that up later uh, when I saw uh, when I saw the picture of Bruce Randall. Aha! Uh -huh. right. And I thought, man, that makes a lot of sense. So I went to college um, from '68 to '72, mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, that's when I got my weight up so heavy, uh, my body weight, and I was powerlifting. Right. And then, of course, from that, you know, I shredded down and really started competing in 75. Okay. Now I'm starting to get it. So so basically, you're saying that you're at a young age, as a teenager, you're, you're an athlete playing football in high school, baseball. And you get your membership from your father to start training at Vince's uh, when you were about, what, 16 years of age, you said? Correct, 1965. In 1965. And um, you you trained there for three years. And would you, how no, much? Oh, I trained at Vince's gym. I trained at Vince's gym for a long time. Right. Um, but... Um, uh, less so when I was going to UCLA and powerlifting and trying to become a monster. Right. Okay. Um, so then I went back to Vince's. Right. Okay. So in 1968, you go to UCLA. Right. And right. And, and you start doing powerlifting. Uh -huh. Okay. Now initially at Vince's in 1965. Uh, how did you said you were trained basically next to Larry? How was the atmosphere there, and and how did you train? What did Vince teach you? Um, you know, I think the greatest influence that Vince had was the equipment that he provided. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, the uh, the long pull, the rope pull. Uh, neck press on the bench press, uh, pull ups to the sternum. Mm -hmm. uh, let me think. Uh, the way we worked our calves, uh, not a lot of, of ab work because he thought that retarded uh, muscle growth. But the equipment was all based on shaping and Vince once said, you know, we're all jewelers and each of us is a diamond 
And what we're doing is creating facets. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was the kind of place where you didn't just work delts, you worked real delts. Mm -hmm. Or you didn't just work triceps, you worked the outer head. Mm -hmm. So I think that just the, and Charles Glass, my dear friend now, he trains people the same way. Uh, yeah. Just working, uh, you know, the pack, no way. But the upper pack, the lower pack, the inner pack, the outer pack. Mm -hmm. So I think that was basically it. And, you know, Larry developed that shoulder press, uh, the way he uh, superseded the uh, preacher curls, the spider bench for Pete, the cable, uh, cable crossovers, uh, all that stuff um, really they were all shaping machines. Yeah. Um, you know, there was no way in the world to work your lower back there unless you did good mornings. But, you know, uh, I, I somehow that was out of my, my, uh, my wheelhouse. But, um, you know, and, and of course, there we were in the San Fernando Valley and then over the hill in Santa Monica was Joe Gold and, and uh, Gold's gym. Yeah. So it was, um, uh, Vince did not have, most of the equipment was made out of wood by Dave Draper. Mm -hmm. So that gym was, and the cables were rope, a uh, nylon rope for feel, he used to say. And um, so it was just, it was almost like artistic bodybuilding versus more mass training. Yeah, I understand. Um, okay. So that was your, you, I mean, you had a great introduction to bodybuilding. I have to admit going straight to Vince's that is just, right. yeah. I mean, not even Larry had that. So I have to admit you were very lucky. Um, but how, how would you say, um, how heavy when you were you, when you decided to, uh, focus more on mass building with powerlifting? So you trained for about three years. How heavy? 185. 185. What made you, yeah. were you happy with your physique or, or did you want to put even more muscle? I mean, what was the motivating switch? Well, that was, that was, I saw the before and after of Bruce Randall mm. and I said, you know what? That makes sense to me. And, and believe me, when I was weighing 250, 260, 270, a 135 pound barbell curl felt like a feather. I bet. I would walk, walk into a building and I often used to think, shit, I can walk right through that door. <laughs> so there's, there's something about being big. Yeah. Relatively, if you're big, smaller things are lighter. Yeah, of course. Of course. So, so you, you. So my logic. Yeah. Go on, sorry. Go no, please. No, my logic was get heavy, lift heavy maximize the muscle size and then lose the body fat yeah and that's what i did how how much were you squatting deadlifting and, and bench pressing when you had reached your your maximum size probably 400 bench 500 deadlift maybe uh 500 400 what was that 465 squat okay and how long did that take you? I mean, you started in 1968 to powerlift. And what, what year did you reach your peak? How many years was that? Two years, till 70. Then I went back to Vince's. Aha, uh -huh, 1970. And you reached a maximum poundage in weight of, was it 285, 290? Right, right, 285. Right. And then you decide, so this was all kind of like a master plan. No, it was evolving. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, magazines in those days were very, very important for the beginning bodybuilder. Mm. We didn't have computers, cell phones. And so when Iron Man or Muscle Builder or Flutch came out, Strength and Health, Mm -hmm. I think Dan Lurie had a magazine. 
When those came out every month, that was like candy to a baby. I bet. <laughs> and did they, and did they kind of... I was on the cover of all of them. Yeah, you were. But did, is that where you got the idea from? Did you f flip through the mags and see the transformation of Bruce yeah, Randall? Uh -huh. Yeah, right. uh -huh. yeah, right. uh -huh. yeah. Okay. And, um, I mean, this, this does sound like a, 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 a deliberate plan that you had to, to put on, as you said, to put on, put on the mass and then get shredded. Was the purpose to then present more muscle during competition? Right. Because the heavier your body weight, the more weight you can use. Mm. The more weight you use, the more you demand the muscles to work, the muscles hypertrophy. Yeah. So, and then, um, you know, I mean, in retrospect, I, I, to, to be completely honest with you, I never, and this all came to me so easy that I don't think I really buckled down once. Mm. I was having too much fun. It was California in the 60s and 70s. You know, we were at Malibu. We, you know, but, but anyway, I mean, I did, I did take it serious, but uh, um, it wasn't, it, before I became a pro, uh, it was more like, you know, I, I taught school, my friend. And after school, I went to the gym. Mm. You taught school just like Frank Zane did? Yeah. Uh, All right. Cool. I didn't know that. Um, okay. And in 1977, history in English, um, in 1977, when Frank was training for the Olympia, I was training for the world, both of which we won. Yeah. Uh, we made that movie Sagan. And, um, uh, I mean, I learned a great deal from Frank. A hundred percent. hundred percent. Okay. Um, so between Vince and Frank, and I happen to be very inquisitive, always looking for a better exercise or combination of food or carbs or whatever, um, you know, my inquisitive mind with the background that I had, uh, uh really helped me. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes, um, Joe Reader would, would be, you know, Joe could sell my body, Bob Kennedy could sell my body. But Joe used to say, you know, Steve, if you could just put 10 pounds on your shoulders and arms, you know? <laughs> but, you know, I don't know, uh, Carlos, if, it, it, I mean, that was, that was me. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's how I ended up. No. And, um, you know, so, um, but, but what I noticed looking back is, um, I had good muscle attachments and good muscle shape. Mm. I agree. Um, and, and pretty good. Pretty good vascularity. Yes, you did. Um, so, you know, I think my muscles look different than the guys today. Well, yeah, I mean, you had a very unique physique, especially after your transformation. And that's kind of what I want to right. find out about now. So you've put on mass, right? Um, you were doing, right. I'm assuming you were just doing your general powerlifting schedule. What, what was that like? What was your training like to put on all that mass? So you did incorporate certain, not just powerlifting, but Olympic weightlifting, especially cleans. Um, what about clean and, and jerk? Clean, but, but no, I, would, I, I wish, I, in retrospect, I wish that I did uh, more snatches. Mm -hmm. 
because like I said, uh, Bill Pearl saw my back one time, uh, and he said, you look like your back's been in a cast. So, um, you know, I just, for, for whatever reason, Vince never really um, had, I, I didn't really understand that. And Frank, uh, we, we never talked about my lower back, but Frank had a great lower back. Yeah. But he had years of slots. Exactly. Uh, ahead yeah. of me. Yeah. So, you know, you're talking to a guy that did sissy squats mm. and, um, and when this wasn't looking, <laughs> we would do uh, full squats on the Smith machine. <laughs> At least. So, um, back to UCLA. So you've, you've just basically training college in college, heavy weights, as much as you can handle. Uh, using the power rack, using the you know general powerlifting uh, lifts, and and doing cleans as well, and you then decide to do uh, actually bef before going to your transition, what kind of diet were you on to put on all that mass to go to go really to basically to put on a hundred pounds because you went from one eighty five to two eighty five. Um, obviously, I understand that you're doing powerlifting. But what kind of diet were you on to put on all that mass in two years? I mean, that's a lot of weight in two years. Um, it wasn't quality weight, but I was young, so maybe I was able to do that. Hmm. Lots of dairy, lots of steak, lots of eggs, mm -hmm. cheese. You know. how, how many quarts of milk would you say were you having per day? Would it be a gallon? I remember eating about, I'm guessing throughout the day, but I remember my my downfall was uh, grilled cheese sandwiches. <laughs> and I probably ate 10 a day. 10 grilled cheese sandwiches. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> And I'm not proud. I'm not proud. No, it's fine. I want to. I just. I'm just curious. How many eggs would you have a day? <laughs> a dozen, two dozen? Probably a dozen. A dozen. No, just a dozen. And and a gallon of milk or half a gallon? Probably half a gallon. Yeah, yeah. And you said steaks as well. Would it be a a couple of steaks or one steak a day on top of all of that? Or one steak, one steak. You know, and right. and basically it was three meals a day. Mm -hmm. Right. So so what would Knowing all of that now, what would your breakfast look like? Um, maybe eight eggs, mm -hmm. uh, half a grapefruit, hamburger patty, and whole wheat toast. Right. And then wh when would you mostly eat those grilled cheese sandwiches then? Ten with lunch. In the afternoon mm -hmm. and after dinner. Wow. And so in the afternoon, you'd be eating, you know, half of that for lunch and then half of that for dinner with a steak? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And throughout and the... a baked potato and a salad <laughs> and broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. And, and throughout the day, drinking as well milk. Right. Right. Was that as like a and snack? And taking, oh, okay, here we go. <laughs> uh, would, would you drink the milk between your, your three meals or would it be with your meals? In uh, between. In between, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and liver tablets. So you're also doing supplementation. Um, how many liver tabs, for example, are you having in this mass program? Uh, a ten with each meal. Ten with each meal. Did you have anything else? Liver capsule. Uh, huh? Did you have anything else? Any other kind of uh, supplements? With... Sure, B complex, HCL, mm -hmm. multivitamin, right. uh, germ oil. Right. Is this stuff that you all learned from from Vince Gironda while training with him earlier? Vince and Rio Blair. Okay. Okay. Right. And again, uh, Carlos, I keep telling you, I. Uh, I was joined to college. I spent most of my time studying nutrition. Okay. So, <laughs> you know, I, I, um, I, the, 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 the college, the education came very 
very easy for me. Mm-hmm. I gra- graduated summa cum laude, um, so I spent my time between classes in the library looking up volumes about nutrition. I can imagine. Trying to maximize your, your gains by maximizing your knowledge. <laughs> uh, so you had already learned from Vince and from Rio H. Blair earlier um, about nutrition. Uh, I'm understand, and this is what I'm understanding now. Right. Right. Uh-huh. Um, were you also taking then Rio H. Blair's protein, or was the all the food you were oh, eating yes. enough? Oh yes. Even on top of all those grilled cheese sandwiches, the milk, the eggs, the steak, you had Rio Blair's protein on top of that, or was it only when you were bodybuilding? That was my that my dessert. That was my dessert. <laughs> How many times a day would you have Rio H. Blair's protein? in raw cream with the protein powder and add a little bit of vanilla, coconut, and put peaches on the top. Wow, that sounds delicious. <laughs> right. okay. Now, mind you, yeah. mind you, it wasn't every week for two years. As I started to get bigger, I slowed down the intake, added more protein, so I didn't just put it, and you when you see my before picture, I'm not fat there. I'm just smooth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you are. Exactly. Exactly. I've seen it. Right. Okay, so I get it now. You're on this mass gaining diet using powerlifting, um, heavy weight training for two years. You put on 100 pounds, um, and then you decide to transition back to bodybuilding. Um and this was what year? Nineteen seventy, you said. Nineteen seventy. Right. Uh huh. Okay. Um, did you then basically completely quit powerlifting, or did you still try and incorporate power work whilst you were cutting down? No, I became pretty much a bodybuilder. Okay. Is that when you went straight back to Vince's gym? Yep. Right. And. Uh, Sorry? Full time. For a time, okay. What What do you mean by that? No, full time. Oh, full time, right. Um, one question I forgot to ask. In this mass gaining period of two years, was it completely natural at this point? Oh, no. No. Okay. So, what... what no, I took Dianabol. Okay. Was that the only thing you were taking? Right, okay. How many Diana Bowl were you having? Three, three a day. Three a day. And they were five or ten milligram uh, tablets? Five. 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 So, okay, that's not much. And and a shot of Deca Durabilin. And that was... Uh, a CC, yeah. Was that um, done, you know, the whole year, throughout the whole year, or was it done in cycles, a couple of cycles a year or something like that? No, I always did it all year. All year, wow, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. And you did that already b- before when you were training at Vince's or only when you were really trying to gain all that mass? Both. Both, okay. Right. Yeah. Okay, so so you go back to Vince's gym and you start training. Um, all right, I, I, I guess I want to now find out what what kind of changes you did to get so shredded, I mean, what what uh, what was the end result? Uh, for example, uh, I don't even know what uh, what was your end weight after you you cut down again. One ninety eight. So you basically two hundred pounds. So you shredded eighty five pounds, and how long did that take? About nine months. Whoa, that's incredible! <laughs> that's fantastic. Nine months. Okay. This is really awesome because this is kind of almost similar to Bruce Randall's um, uh, transformation. Uh, right. It was my, my, I was following him. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's incredible. Uh, this is so fantastic. Um, what was your diet like, firstly? 
uh, during this uh, shredding stage. Dryfish, boys, have a grapefruit, uh, two pieces of, of uh, well done wheat toast, mm -hmm. coffee, and then lunch, tuna fish, um, lettuce, carrots, celery, maybe a small piece of cheddar cheese. And then for dinner, I had a filet mignon, a baked potato, broccoli, and my dessert was strawberries. Right. Were you also supplementing then, doing Rio Bless? Uh... Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I kind of had my own ideas then, and Rio was no longer around. Okay. So, so what were you supplementing with on, on top of your meals? Were you still doing uh, liver capsules and? Sure, yeah, and liver. I'm sorry, forgot. Was it also ten with each meal? Always, yeah. Always. That was it. And and then uh, Frank got me on uh, on aminos too, so I started taking aminos. How many how many grams with each meal, or or how did you take the aminos? So, so ten, 10 grams. A day or with each meal? With each meal. Right. So you got three meals with your supplements. Were you also taking any kind of protein like milk and egg or still Rio Blair's protein? Or, no, or, no, no protein. No, no. no. That's all you were having. Yeah. Okay. So that's all you were having. No, no, no protein powder, nothing else. No. Okay. And... Um, so it took you nine months, you basically shredded 85 pounds off your body, and you were training full-time at Vince's gym. What was your split like? What was your training like then? So basically, push, pull, legs twice a week. Right. Right. Exactly. And you were mainly using mostly the exercises you had already learned at Vince's gym. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, everybody knew uh, uh, dumbbell incline press, dumbbell curls. I mean, you know, nothing wide grip, upright rolling. You know, the senior is all suspect. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Okay. Um, yeah, I've got your booklet. So, would would the stuff in your booklets pretty much be what you did uh, in regards to yeah. your programs? Yeah. Yeah. 100%. yeah. I mean, your booklets literally read just like as if I'm reading the Wild Physique or or whatever. I mean, it's it's just even the images the the images drawn there are so similar to the images from Vince's books and booklets. So, <laughs> yeah, it's it's very similar. So as we have heard from Steve Davis, similar to Bruce Randall's powerlifting approach, Steve used a combination of powerlifting, diet and steroids to build his physique up to 300 pounds. And then when he was satisfied at his monstrous size, he cut down to just under the defined and ripped 200 pounds in a short period of time through caloric restriction and bodybuilding. This transformation serves as one of the best examples of the bulk and cut method used by golden era bodybuilders to achieve size fast. For those interested in learning more about Steve Davis's methods, his books are available through Amazon or through his website. So I do hope you have enjoyed watching this in-depth video on Steve Davis's transformation. And if you have, please give the video a like, subscribe if you haven't done so, and leave me your comments. And click the bell button to receive notifications to future videos. In the next video, we will be learning the techniques, nutritional principles, and exercises that Steve Davis learned from the iron guru himself, Vince Gironda. So stay tuned. That's it for me. This is the Golden Era book. I'm saying bye for now. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Vince Deronda's approach to bodybuilding, his principles, and all these tips of wisdom that he has, I mean, there's so much stuff that probably hasn't been proven by science, and it will take science to 
prove or disprove uh, Vince, but to be honest, these three books, I believe, which I call the Classic Physique Bundle, are the best books that Vince ever came out with. And they, of course, are the Wild Physique, the Master Series, and the Pro Series. Have a look at it this way. The Wild Physique, I believe, is like the ABCs of Vince Gironda's principles to bodybuilding. He teaches you the exercises and his principles. But how do you put them together? Well, the Master Series is a 14-month program of using all of these principles, all of the diets that Vince came out with, all of the exercises. And believe me, it's a brilliant, brilliant program. Many people have used it. I know I know personally a lot of uh, bodybuilders that have actually used it and uh, f made fantastic results with it. And of course, the Pro Series was a book that he came out with later on, specially targeted for uh, getting into competition. It's just the, these three books, as I call it, the Classic Physique Bundle, uh, Vince's best work, and available, of course, at www.goldenerabookum.com. Now, the Pro Series of Bodybuilding, which was targeted for professional bodybuilders, is a contains six programs, each of which go for two months each, so it's a whole year, uh, again, in preparation for competition. Online training is now available, including my new program, Novice to Classic, a program geared towards beginners and novices looking at developing a classic physique, as well as Classic Cut, geared at those who wish to lose weight and gain muscle fast. Details available at www.goldenerabooking.com. Need a bodybuilding poster for your gym or office? Then check out ironmanmagazinearchive.smugmug.com for the highest quality posters on the planet. Scroll through the galleries of all the legends, including greats such as Arnold, Frank Zane, Sergio Oliva, Serge Nubre, Tom Platts, and Larry Scott, and much, much more, and select your poster now. Your favorite YouTube channel, please visit teespring.com slash stores slash golden era bookworm for merchandise, including t-shirts, hoodies, face masks, phone cases, and much, much more. Once again, at teespring.com slash stores slash golden era bookworm. Become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. To take full advantage of my collaborations, use code GEB20 with nspnutrition.com and vincegeronda.com as well as code bookworm12 at osl.com for a discount at checkout.